Florida uses mosquitoes to combat Zika. Florida released thousands of Zika-fighting mosquitoes at a test site near Key West on Tuesday, hoping to stop Zika and other mosquito-borne viruses. 20,000 male mosquitoes infected with the Wolbachia bacteria were released in Stock Island, about 130 miles southwest of Miami. Scientists injected the naturally occurring Wolbachia bacteria into the male mosquito embryos in order to infect them. The bacteria can stop viruses such as Zika from growing inside mosquitoes and is not harmful to humans. Once infected, female mosquitoes spread the bacteria to their offspring, even if the female mates with an uninfected male. However, when an infected male mates with an uninfected female, the female's eggs will not hatch. Large-scale release of Wolbachia-infected mosquitoes has previously been trialed in South America. Although there hasn't been an official report on the impact of the method, it is recommended by the World Health Organization. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Here's everything you need to know about Zika and how to protect yourself from it. New evidence links Zika virus to brain and spinal cord infections. A link between the Zika virus and neurological disorders deepens as scientists have found cases of microcephaly and Guillain-Barre syndrome may be the most obvious diseases caused by the virus. Microcephaly has many potential causes including infections, viruses, toxins, or unknown genetic factors. Infants with microcephaly are born with abnormally small brains and skulls. In the most serious cases, the birth defect can cause the early death of a child or even the death of the baby while still in the womb. Even if babies survive, they will be intellectually and physically handicapped, or in the best cases, they will suffer psychomotor impairments. Another neurological disorder commonly linked with the Zika virus is Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is when the body's immune system destroys the myelin sheath that surrounds the axons of peripheral nerves. The first symptoms of the syndrome include weakness or abnormal sensations in the legs, which gradually spread to the arms and upper body and eventually lead to breathing difficulties. After observing the virus replicating in brain tissues of aborted and stillborn fetuses, scientists now suspect the Zika virus can act directly on nerve cells. Researchers also believe the virus may attack nerve cells directly in adults. Newly discovered brain and spinal cord infections in those exposed to the Zika virus include meningitis, encephalitis, and myelitis. Such infections were all caused by direct attacks on nerve cells. The disorder suspected of being caused by the Zika virus has prompted more urgent measures to develop a vaccine to shield people from the disease. What does Zika do to the brain? Three new experiments studying how Zika affects a developing fetus could provide proof of a casual link between the outbreak in Brazil and the spate of birth defects in babies that followed. The mosquito-borne Zika virus has been linked to a severe birth defect in babies called microcephaly, characterized by an abnormally small head. Thus far, most research on the virus has focused on the damage it inflicts on newborns. Now, scientists are using mice to better understand how exactly Zika damages the brain. The virus, when injected into pregnant mice, was found to preferentially target the placenta, damaging it and using it to leak into the fetus. It travels to the brain and infects neural progenitor cells, turning them into viral factories. The cells keep producing the virus until they explode and in turn infect other cells. Without the neuroprogenitor cells responsible for brain building, the brain does not fully develop. Mice fetus whose brains were directly injected with the virus developed structural abnormalities in three to five days. The abnormalities were similar to those seen in babies with microcephaly. But though these findings are significant, they are not conclusive since tests were done on mice and not pregnant humans. How the Zika virus infects the placenta. Researchers claim they have discovered why the Zika virus infects unborn children via their mother's placenta. The placenta usually sustains the fetus, providing nourishment and defending it against infections. However, in the case of the Zika virus, a new study has found that the placenta appears to enhance the disease's growth. Emory University researchers found that the Zika virus infects immune cells in the placenta and replicates without killing the host cell. From there, the virus travels deeper inside the fetus, eventually infecting the unborn child. 
What's your take? Do you think this discovery is going to help us combat the virus or is all already lost? Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Six ways to protect yourself from Zika. With the Zika virus continuing to spread across the globe, here are some useful tips for protecting yourself from the dreaded disease. There are a number of ways to minimize the risk of contracting the Zika virus. If possible, avoid traveling to areas with reported cases of Zika. When possible, remain in air-conditioned places and make sure to shut screens on windows and doors. When heading to areas where you may be vulnerable to infection, apply insect repellent to expose skin. In addition, it's advisable to keep your body covered as best you can with trousers and long sleeve shirts. Pregnant women should use protection during sexual intercourse. Abstaining is the only way to eliminate the possibility of contracting the virus through sex. Lastly, when going to bed, use mosquito nets to protect yourself from infected mosquitoes while sleeping. In the United States, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention has reported 2,722 cases of the Zika virus as of August 31st.